Hello my dear viewers, you are watching the Summers channel. Today I will tell you about Grand Prince of Kiev Volodymyr II Monomach. During his life Monomach has taken Smolensk, Chernigiv, Kiev and Pariaslav Prince title. He was one of the rurics, he founded Monomach dynasty, created political reforms and led anti cumans campaigns. Monomach's childhood passed in his father Prince court near the Pariaslav. He really has led father Druzhina, the private prince god. Vladimir participated at several military campaigns, suppressed the Vyatichi uprising, fought against the Kumans. When the Vladimir was 13 years old, he became a ruler of Rostov. After several Yaroslavish reign as the Grand Prince of Kiev, Monomak took Chernigiv in his ownership. In 1080, he won campaigns against Togs and Kumans. When the Manomax father died, he seized the Kiev throne to the Svetopolk Itaslavich and also transferred Chernigiv to his elder brother Alex Svetoslavich. By that time he came back to the Periasli. The government rotation system was too complicated. There were a lot of contenders to rule in each principality, so the political reform was needed as it was never before. In this case, in 1097, Monomak and Svetopolk organized the Lublich Council. The council declared a principle of Prince inheritance. The elder son will inherit the principality of his father and only it. De facto, each family in Rurik dynasty had secured one of the existing principalities. The new political system in Rus was established, and it was based on large feudal land ownership. Due to a significant threat from the Cumans, the Rus Prince held the Dolop Congress. The main target was to end up quarrels between Rus Prince and consolidate Rus forces against the Cumans. The Congress was located near the Kiev city. As the Dolop Congress, Monomak described typical life of Rus citizens. The peasants goes out into the plowing field, and Cuman suddenly attacks him, kills him, takes his horse, raids to the village, loots peasants' belongings, burns the house, and enslaves peasants' wife and children. As a result, Rus Price forces established several large-scale campaigns against Cumans. In 1103, the United Squires defeat Nomad's hordes in the Sutani battle. At the beginning of the battle, Rus completely destroyed Cumans' advance, according to the chronic. Probably, Cumans could withstand the Rus cavalry mass attack. The 20 Cumans hands died in this battle. In 1111, near the Severus Donets, Vladimir Monomak and his allies took another great victory against Cumans. As a result, the Cumans' aggression ended. The future relations between them were built on a contextual basis. The Dolop Congress, as far as Rus' great victories, made the Kiev Rus country stronger. Rus Prince approached to each other, the state forces consolidated, lands united, and the authority of Vladimir Monomak increased. On April 16, 1113, Svetopolk Zislavich died in Kiev. The economic situation in the city was awful. Citizens started the rebellion. The main reason of revolt were two high prices on bread and salt, starvation, product speculation, and debt in slave. On April 17, Kiev citizens were destroying properties of moneylenders. The St. Sophia Cathedral Council suggested to the Vladimir the Kiev throne. Firstly, he rejected the proposition, but rebellion became larger and larger, so finally Monomak has taken Grand Prince's title. As he became a Grand Prince, he established new laws that called Vladimir Monomak's statute. The main points of statute were giving rights to the Zakups, people that had taken loan from the feudal, and because of that they must perform duties to their lord. The case was to forbid a feudal to be Zakup. Forbidden a merchant and slave for debt, if you couldn't pay the debt off because of accident like war. Loan interest became limited. This new law sexually protected poor citizens from eternal bondage. Vladimir Monomak ruled the country by himself. He reincarnated the centralized monarchy, and he almost controlled three quarters principalities of Kiev Rus. Truly, he was the last ruler of the Rus who controlled the United Country as the sole monarch. And there are a lot of discussion about a great artifact Monomak's head. Until the 18th century, the origin of the regalia was associated with the Constantine Monomax gift legend. But by the 19th century, this version became very doubtful. There are four main theories about head origin. Golden Horde, Cairo, Ancient Moscow, and Byzantium versions. The legendary version told us that the Vladimir called his vessel and said, 
the Grand Prince Oleg raided and collected tribute from the Constantinople, then Svetoslav Igorich collected tribute from the Constantinople, and we, by the God blessing, deserve the same. Vladimir called the best Rus warlords, created a great army and sent them to the Tres. This raid was very successful. A lot of treasures and slaves were captured. Byzantium was ruled by the Constantine IX Monomach, the grandfather of Vladimir. Constantine didn't want to have war with Rus. He has given a big amount of treasures to congratulate Vladimir with his Kiev race. Thus, he appeased the price and prevented the war. Constantinople legates, Metropolitan Neophyte of Ephesus, Bishops of Stachios of Militinsky and the strategists of Antioch brought to Vladimir a golden dish, on which laid life-giving crucifixion, royal crown, holy arms and a golden chain. This regala legitimate Vladimir to be a Kaiser of all Rus and label him as Monomach. This legend has got a lot of problems. Firstly, Constantine died when Vladimir was two years old. There is no evidence that Metropolitan Nephi has really existed. And finally, many historical things that Vladimir Selut wasn't called as Monomach during his life. This version says that the Monomach's name has appeared later, when the head legend was created. Monomach wrote treatise that called Instruction for Children. This paper is known from the Laurential Chronicle. Instruction was the Monomach's moral testament. It includes a nationwide task, extolling the idea of state's unity, which was ensured in Lublin Congress Treaty. He pronounces benefits of Christian commandments and instructs descendants to invalidate the divine plan. He wrote, To live as befit Christians, always and everywhere to act as befit righteous men, remembering that the God's watch is more reliable than humans. Nowadays, Monomach is remembering as wisdom ruler that tried to save country unity. He was the last grand prize that controls bigger part of the Kiev Rus as centralized monarch before the Mongol invasion. Also, he created important political reforms in succession aspects that however did save the country from the future strong massacre, but it is another story. If you enjoy the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. If you are interested in new videos, write a comment, it will motivate me to develop a content. See you and study history.